Philip Forsberg, number nine, Nashville Predators. Now, Elliot, when we were in Stockholm, uh, we had a chance to talk to a number of hockey players, many of whom were Swedish, many of whom were very stylish. Mm -hmm. Hampus Lindholm comes to mind mm -hmm. right away. But someone who may be laying claim to the most stylish Swedish hockey player in the NHL is our next guest, Philip Forsberg, the Nashville Predators. Uh, when I say the most stylish Swede in the NHL, do you agree or disagree, Philip? I mean, it's it's there's a lot of competition. I, I'll give my my fellow countrymen a lot a good yeah they uh, they they bring it. I mean, I think Hendrik Lundqvist yeah. kind of set the standards. Yeah, so we're all just trying to follow that. And, yep. uh, yeah, I think it's good. I think uh, I mean I'd take that as a compliment. For so sure. when he when he retired, they kind of cleared the field. This is like Bergeron retires, and now the Selkie field mm -hmm. is open. Yeah. <laughs> Lundqvist retires, and the stylish that's right field. Yeah, is, it's, is, it's a very good open. comparison. I would say <laughs> uh, same value too. Uh, no, but, uh, how was your summer? It was great. It was really good. Uh, spend it mostly in Nashville, month in Sweden, and then yeah. the rest really in Nashville. A couple of weekend trips here and there, and um, just kind of yeah, getting some some time with family and friends and nice. re reloading. Now your new coach. How much time have you had? How many chances have you had, or how much time have you sat down with Andrew Burnett just to kind of figure out the way this is all going to work? Uh, not a lot, honestly. Like we we um, talked the day after he. I was there on still in Nashville when he was uh, announced as when they had the press conference and everything. And I was gonna sit down with him the next morning and chat, but my flight flight got canceled. So we had to reschedule the flight. So I literally had five minutes with him uh, mm -hmm. in person. And then we have been talking on the phone. So it's at least like I've got to know him a little bit, but I'm really excited to uh, go to work and, and actually get to know him and how, how he likes to play things. What are you expecting? Wh how are you expecting things to be different? Well, I think just from what I've heard from, I mean, from guys around the league, from other people, players that had him as a coach is that he's very yeah offensive minded you know he he has a certain way of style of teams that he wants wants to have and obviously you've seen the results i mean especially the panthers when he was the yeah the head coach there for a little bit and and even with with devils last year their offensive teams uh like to attack the game and obviously we've we built our defensive style in nashville for yeah. as long as the franchise has been around obviously so i think if we can combine the two and put them together i think we can be a, a really good team mm -hmm. you know this is the, the squad's evolving into a new addition of the National Predators, as you mentioned. Um, where do you see it going? Like, what type of team do you think we can expect to see in Nashville this year? I think it'd be a team that that will surprise a lot of people. I think, uh, I mean, obviously we got a taste of some of the young guys at the end of last yep. year with all the injuries that we had. And, and um, I mean, obviously nobody wants to deal with that type of, of injury list on, mm -hmm. on top players, but it was a great opportunity for those guys to kind of take that that step and they took it obviously and now the challenge will be can we as a team do that over a longer period of time like obviously we can't rely on on juice to say yeah i mean to two one we can't two one win <laughs> the whole season i don't know how many two one wins we had because of him and like yeah. but um that's going to be the next step for us I, our, I think our goaltending is is unbelievable our defense is great and it's offense that we need to improve on and obviously mm -hmm. we have a lot of young talent but also it's going to be up to to us, the, the older guys, obviously sure. myself and, and a couple of guys that we brought in, O'Reilly and Nyquist are two great additions up front with veteran presence. And then it's going to be up to guys to step up and take that role. And I think that's mm. uh, what's really exciting about our team. What, what did you uh, what did you think when you first heard Ryan O'Reilly's name? It's great. I mean, I, I wasn't really I obviously knew that he was probably one of the most sought after. Yeah. I mean, free agent forwards. And I wasn't really sure because, I mean, you make, a, as you guys know, we trade a couple of players at the deadline. We make a couple of moves in the offseason. You're not really sure where the organization is going when it comes to free agency. I wasn't sure if we were looking for a center in his mid 30s, you know, to come to our team sure. at the time because you need, we can't just throw, I mean, nine, 23 year olds <laughs> in the lineup either up front, you know. So I think yeah. that was great. We need players to, to, um, to guide, but also to make an Im immediate impact. I mean, like I said, we're we're, we're a playoff team. Like we mm -hmm. want to make the playoffs. We missed the playoffs last year, and that's not something that we want to do again. So we want to go right back at it. And uh, having a guy with that experience and that skill set, I think, is going to be uh, a mm -hmm. very good help for us. Tell me a little bit about Tommy Novak, like Novechkin. First Novechkin, of all, it's a fantastic yeah. nickname. <laughs> but secondly, you know, I, I watched that guy at the end of last year. I, I admit I didn't know a ton about him mm -hmm. before he came up, but I was fascinated by him. Like, is you know, you can teach players certain things, but I don't know if you can teach kind of the nose for the offense that he no. has. So tell me a bit more. No, I couldn't agree more. I think it's when you look at him, it's uh, it's not the, the shiniest toy in the toolbox. You know, he's just like his gear is kind of like it doesn't look like he tied his skates hard enough. And then he comes out there and he's just 
yeah, his hands are incredible. His vision is so good. He's like sneaky fast too. Like has that, like, I don't know who to really compare him to, but he is, has that way of like slow the game down and then kind of like lull people into sleep. And then he just picks it up and has like a really quick first couple of steps and hmm. can shoot the puck, shoot the puck well too. So I think he does a lot of things well. I think he was one of the guys, even the year before he, he was on the team as like a third line center, second power play guy. And he produced, he got COVID and then we didn't see him. <laughs> he just, they <laughs> sent him down and he wasn't called back up and everybody's kind of like, oh, mm -hmm. I guess where, where'd he go? And then <laughs> came into training camp and maybe didn't have the best camp, but then, I mean, once he was called up, it was immediate impact. And I mean, almost a point per game there, especially towards the end when we had a pretty uh, pretty decimated roster up front, he was the leader up there, mm -hmm. which is cool to see. And I'm really excited to see him take that next step and uh, evolve into what hopefully could be a number one center in this league at one point. I think he, ha I think he has a new nickname now, <clears throat> Toolbox, as in not, <laughs> not the best tool in the toolbox. That one's going to stick. Adding adding up nicknames. You know, one of the great stories uh, from Nashville, well, I should say, one of the stories that I really enjoyed watching because it was, you know, a player who every game was playing to stay. And it was, okay, I, I earned one more game. I earned one more game, and that was Luke Evangelista. Mm -hmm. And he got called up and started to produce. And... You know, anytime the organization would think about, okay, he's got to go back to Milwaukee, score two goals. And in his mind, like, okay, I earned one more game. Like the player yeah. who's there earning one more game. Do you have a thought on Evangelista and any conversations maybe that you would have had with, with Luke last season? I mean, to be honest, I, I missed, I haven't played with him yet. <laughs> because <laughs> well, I, missed, right. I missed all those games. I mean, oh, I, yeah. I, I've missed the last, whatever, 30 games. So I, I mean, last time I played, we had Ekholm, we had Grandlin, we had Niederreiter. That's had, right. You know, Joe, right. Was, right. Like it's going to be a completely different roster, but I've watched a lot of him, obviously yeah. watching the games. And I think it's, it's, he has that same ability. I was talking about Novak. He like, he slows the game down. It's almost like he plays the game in slow motion. He like creates him, he finds himself room. He just kind of like slows up and all of a sudden he's got 10 yeah. feet to work with, finds guys in unbelievable vision. Uh, definitely really excited to get a chance, hopefully get the chance to like play with him in training camp and get to know him a little bit more as a player and as a person. And um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited about a lot yeah. of our young players. Like that's what I think, if anything from last year, it was tough year to miss the playoffs, but that is something we can take with us. You For, need new blood, right? You need new yeah, blood. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's inevitable. You have to change. Like, change is, is coming whether you want it or not. And I think for, for our group, we might as well do a lot at the same. Like, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it all, right? New mm -hmm. GM, new coach, a bunch of changes on on players. So, I um, I mean, definitely be a, a little bit of a page page yeah. turn for the Predators, but I'm excited about it. It's just sorry, Jeff. One more. Uh, wait a second. I can't believe I forgot this, but was it you who showed up at the airport with Ekholm mm -hmm. last year? Yes, I forgot about He mentioned it about how mm -hmm. when he said goodbyes the next morning, I guess it was you and your wife and him and his family, and you went and you gave him like the Swedish chocolates, I think, as, as, <laughs> as a right, goodbye. Yeah. And, you know, it kind of reminds me, like Rasmus Sendin, when he got traded last year to Washington, Nylander went with him off the ice and he's like, hey, there's cameras here. Like, don't lose your don't don't start crying now. And he tried to console him as he got out. Sounded like that was a pretty emotional conversation yeah, no, between sure. you and Echo. Like that one was. Yeah, I mean, it was because it was happening like same time I was injured. Same thing. You're just dealing with a lot of a lot of stuff already. We traded Niederreiter a couple of days before we traded, you know, like literally a day before, I think. So, you know, that the pieces are starting to fall, you know, mm -hmm. around you and yeah, I mean, there's been rumors about him probably every year for the last three, four years, you know, just with his deal he had that was very cap yeah. friendly for teams and un un unbelievable player. Like a lot of teams needed that type of style defender, you know, and signed his new deal. So every it's kind of like, oh, nice. <laughs> He's <laughs> actually not going anywhere in the first year on that deal. Of course, that's yeah. when it like when it happens. And it was tough. Like we, we played together for 10 years and we live close to each other in Sweden, too. So it's like I came in at 19. He was had been there for a year or two and like kind of knew knew the ways around, helped me set up an apartment, get a phone number, you know, all the like, the stuff that you don't really have any idea how to do mm -hmm. <laughs> as, as a young kid. So it was cool. It was uh, almost like a, a big brother to me early on. And then, yeah, I think it was, it was tough for sure. So I, for us, for me and my wife, it was kind of no brainer just to be there and I mean, send him off, <laughs> so to That's speak. Great. And uh, it's going to be weird to play against him, but I'm excited about it as well. It's a classy touch by you. It's a classy touch. Um, for yourself, when you're looking at all these new players coming in uh, or coming up from, from Milwaukee, um, what type of center is the best type of center for Philip Forsberg? It's a great question. Uh, I played with a bunch of different ones. Obviously, the first center I played with was Mike Ribeiro, who was yeah. 
I mean, unbelievable for me at the time. He uh, kind of played that slower game at the time. Unbelievable vision. He was able to slow the game down and find me with speed, and I was able to do that. And then had a great run with Ryan Johansson for a really long time, who was kind of the opposite of body size. Like he was bigger body, yeah. but kind of played the same way. You know, like relied on his on his vision, on his big size, protected puck. And, mm -hmm. and last couple of years has been obviously anybody under the sun on our team. You know, so that's been that's been cool. But I think. I mean, obviously, I, I'd see myself as a shooter mostly, yeah. but I do like to do a lot of things. So I would like to play with somebody that is kind of like around that style that probably is a little bit more of a passer, but it still can finish the opportunities I can create for people. So I think that's that's what I'm excited about, like whether it's going to be Ryan O'Reilly or Tommy Novak, Juice of Parson. We've got a bunch of young guys that yep. can fill that role. And I feel like we have a lot of pieces that I could work well with. Like my skating isn't necessarily the the yeah the best asset to my game you've done pretty well yeah it's it's been all right you've it's gotten better right. it's gotten better so <laughs> it's gotten better and i keep trying to improve that but i think just like having that kind of like a like a two-way almost like an all-round center which ryan O'Reilly is a pretty good description of that so yeah. i'm really excited to to see if we can find that chemistry we wish you luck and we wish the preds luck thanks so much for well, doing thank this thank you today. thank you guys thanks philip